I'm James Just, and this is Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Jason Quintero, chairman out of Solano County Libertarian Party, and Michael Warnkin, libertarian activist. So, with the impeachment moving towards trial, was it a good idea for the national chair to inject the Libertarian Party into the argument, Jason? Absolutely horrible idea. Yeah, Nicholas said this, and, and I gotta say, I'm a friend of Nick's. I, so I wait, 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 let's clear this. It's Nicholas Sarwak. Nicholas Sarwak, our national chair of the Libertarian Party. Of the Libertarian Party. He, uh, I've had dinner with him. I really like the guy. He's a, a, he's a good dude. But he said that the Libertarian Party supports impeach, impeachment of the president. Of the president, and that's absolutely ridiculous. Some do, and from what I have seen, from what I was, most do not. So why he said that we all support this, I think that was a foolish move. Because now I have to answer to people. Because people tell me, oh, so you support the impeachment. I'm saying, no, I don't, because I don't think enough stuff is there. I don't. But your chairman said so. Yeah. No, we as a whole do not. So the party is guilt by association now. Right, yeah. The chairman said we all support it, and we do not. Not all of we. You know what I mean? Yeah, some I, do. I think this for is sure. A, yeah, libertarians are a diverse group of people. We have some people who support and fully support impeachment, some people who are completely against impeachment. Right. And then you got this group of people who say, I've got better things to do, spend my time with, and I'm not going to pay any attention to it at all. Well, as a political party, though, I mean, I guess, you know, it would be natural that they would take a stand on it. It, it seems to me that. Uh, you know, I'm not going to necessarily say the Libertarian Party, you know, lines itself closer with more conservatives. But uh, if if the Green Party came out and said they supported uh, impeachment, I, that would make sense to me. Or right. or the Peace and Freedom Party. O oddly enough, uh, the Green Party, the the uh, previous vice presidential uh, candidate, he came out and said this is all a big show and it's a big bunch of big mess. And he says we got this problem and that problem and them spending the time on impeachment is just useless. And and he says the people who are impeaching him are as bad as he is. So that's actually what Jill Stein said. She she came out the other day in a tweet and said said that uh, these Democrats, they're not resistors, they're collaborators. So the further to the left are saying they're against impeachment, yet someone who could be arguably more towards a, uh, you know, the more conservative view is, is for impeachment. <laughs> right, yeah, I, I'm really, really bothered by this, and I have to end up defending uh, Nicholas's words. It's frustrating. Well, you know, you're saying you don't defend him, and, the, and, and in fact, it sounds like he needs to check, you know, I mean, let's put it this way, it sounds like he's a lame duck president. I mean, he said, you know, I, well, I'm president of the party. I'm on my way out, perhaps, and you know, and and uh, you know, I'll, I'll say whatever I need to. And he's, right. You know. I would just prefer that the other libertarians or anyone doesn't don't speak for me. Yeah. Unless there's a written decision, unless we vote on this, unless we decide together, this is our plan, this is our our value, then fine, and I will support it. But no one asked me. Yeah, well, if if he want to interject himself on a, in a national tragedy like a plane crash, and you want to come yeah. out, that's when a, that's when a chairman has the ability to come out and say and speak for the whole party. But on something like this, where the where the party is so clearly, clearly divided, divided. Clearly it's divided. clearly divided. Yeah. You've got a group who thinks for impeachment, you got a group who thinks against impeachment, and you've got the group for like me and says, why are we wasting time? The only thing we should be discussing about impeachment is well, those two are so awful, you should vote for us. Or or if he had consensus, which again it doesn't sound like he did, and None. and and I, to my understanding, the libertarian party meets physically you know at least four times a year and, and you know this is something that you know perhaps that you know they should discuss the idea of censure or something like and I'm not saying they should you know impeach him and remove him but you know I mean you know guy if you got the microphone for the party you know make sure that the party's behind you before you take a stand and, and uh, you know right yeah I don't want people to think that we're, we're just Democrat like you know this impeachment is happening because the Democrats are bad they're pissed off. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, no, it, in, I, in my opinion, that's what it is. And so we're not just Democrat light. Yeah, the, the uh, it, it doesn't look like even the polls that they do share show that Americans are really behind it. No, no one's, you know, no one's angry. You know, the evidence, you know. No one gives a damn. Yeah, the it's, evidence doesn't even really seem to be there that, you know, supports, you know, and, and, and so for for not only, not only, you know, the impeachment, which just seems weak, you know, but then, right. then he's latched the party to that, right? You know, I mean, right. here's he's a crazy train, let's go with it, right? Right, attach us <laughs> to this, this ridiculous train of impeachment, and, and, and with President Trump's numbers are going up. Yeah. Of all places. So you, you hitch us to this this dead horse. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's not even hitching to the dead horse. The hitch we should be doing is say, look, they're both awful. They're the reasons you should be coming to us. To us, yeah. To us, rather than right. saying joining the Republican. Say, no, they're just both awful. You should come to us because they're awful. Trump is awful. Democrats are awful. We're the good guys. And instead, you've taken a side and you've actually you closed off a potential group of people who we could have had an yeah. easier conversation with. Yeah. Right. And I actually know libertarians who are leaving the party. Yesterday, today, oh, and really? so on, because of that comment. Wow. 
Because they're saying, stop speaking for me. That's not my view. Well, he took the bully pulpit on that, and he's going to probably take it in the chin afterwards. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. as I always say, when you interject yourself, yeah. when you put yourself in the middle of, of two people having a, a mud fight, all you're going to end you're up is covered in mud. In mud. Yep. Right. We should have stayed out of this and <laughs> pressed on something more important like the Afghan paper, a Afghanistan papers. Afghanistan papers, that homeless nice. in the streets, roads are terrible. I, 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 There's right. a laundry list of things we, we should have worked on that about. kind of stuff. And, and, and interestingly enough, uh, presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard, who is a Democrat, who got, you know, had the opportunity to vote in the House mm -hmm. for impeachment, said present, right? She you know? was smart enough yeah. to vote present. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. was, that, was, that was the vote that, uh, that, that he should have made, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's present. essentially present. This whole thing is kind of goofy. I'm, I'm or, here. Or but. just say, you know, interesting and, and the party hasn't coalesced and they're giving me the green light to say either you know and, yeah there's yeah. there's there's other ways we should have taken it that would have been more inclusive yeah to, uh, to the diverse mm -hmm. ideology that is not just the libertarian party but america as a whole right and speaking about diverse crowds uh, jason greta thunberg told a cheering crowd the other day that i guess a week or so ago now that she would put the world leaders against a wall if she didn't tackle <laughs> global warming her way so what do we think she means by putting them against the wall? Is that a Nazi comment, you think? A Stalin comment? I don't know. Uh, it sounds that way. She's not big enough to make such threats, in my view. But yeah, okay. I, I don't think it's a good idea for I don't know. Is she 16? I don't know how old she is. But I'm not going to mess with a 16-year-old girl. But I will talk some smack about her parents. Um, I, I, I'm shocked that her parents would allow her to say these things and put her out there. I think her parents are cowards for... Putting her, their six year I don't know how old she is, but her, their daughter yeah. out there to, to speak the words that they believe. These are not things that she believes. She's been fed these lines and she reads from a script. Yeah, every time she talks, she's right. Reading from, she I mean, reads I, from a script because mom and dad says so or her friends say so. Yeah. So mom and dad don't have the courage to stand up and say these things themselves, but they'll have their daughter do it. Well, I, shame I, on them. I, I, I guess the subtext here is the authenticity of this, right? So so obviously we need to learn we need to learn everything from children. Or children are wise, or they're going to be the one. You know what I and, and and I mean I mean. I remember 2003 watching uh, uh, Al Gore's, you know, movie that we all had to watch, right? You know, how, the unconvenient truth, right? Well, 2016 just passed, okay? And and by his estimates, by that, you know, the, uh, the hockey stick, we were supposed to be underwater. I mean, right. and, and, you know, to be even more embarrassing, in Montecito, he bought his wife a $10 million house where he said it was going to be underwater. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 okay. And so now, obviously, Al Gore can't be brought back up. Okay. So we bring in, you know, some some girl who hitched a ride on a on a on a on a on a boat from from uh, Sweden. Oh, right. You know, is now going to lecture yeah. us, and, and 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 she was on uh, uh, what's her name with the daytime talk show just the other day. I mean, just you know, Ellen. You know, and it's like, oh, oh great. Oh, really? Her and she? Ellen are hanging out. It's like, gosh, you know. And I'm just like, you know, you know. Well, we know this is true, right? And, How dare and, and, you. And, and, and somebody else said the other day, well, you know, we're obviously in a catastrophe because we're going to be, you know, underwater eight years from now until they have to readjust that date too, right? So, I mean, you know, well, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, so, so bring the hate, you know, yeah, I'm saying that, 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 that this global warming is, is, you know, bogus, you know, and, and, and so yeah. the newest poster child is uh, Greta Thunberg and, and, uh, and she's going to be telling people that, you know, that she's going to pin them up against the wall if they don't start moving on yeah. this. Yeah. When mommy and daddy don't have the courage to make that statement, you make the child say it. That's pathetic. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, using children to promote is, this is propaganda. Is always yeah. this is propaganda. Yeah. And, and and I think more people need to see her as such. And and you know, and I liked it when you know the left said or whoever was sporting climate change or you know they say oh, you know whatever you know they said at least see the scientists. Now they're saying see the sixteen year old girl. And well, uh, the yeah. base science is actually fine. You can't. Every action has an equal opposite reaction you cannot interact with the environment and not have some kind of change but yeah, but, but, but the predictions have been wrong for 40 and, years and, now and they've been lying and and and, and they and yeah. it looks like they had you know you know funding mechanisms to get certain outcomes because the the people doing the studies wouldn't get paid unless they had those outcomes so you know now 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 the tail end of this is you know we got a 16 year old girl lecturing to us and, and it's like, advocating yeah. violence if yeah. you don't if they don't get their way and that's for me is how this political left we'll call it the political left even though i don't even like the terms is routinely nowadays promoting violence to accomplish their yes. goals. And yeah. that to me is actually the scary mindset. Yeah. I don't mind people, you can go out and you can promote for whatever viewpoint you want. I yeah. think living cleaner is better. You know, we be, should be mindful of how we get there, but living cleaner is better. But promoting violence to accomplish your goals is always Well, wrong. but I think that goes with the shock. And unless you say something shocking today, you're not gonna find yourself in a media trial. But yeah, I mean, 
I, uh, these two things put together are just so problematic on so many levels. So, yeah. Well, talk about shocking. The Supreme Court has ruled that homelessness is no longer a crime. The cities cannot outlaw sleeping, creating a tent and uh, sleeping on the sidewalks. Yeah, um, well, I mean, if you can't afford to have a house, you know, rightfully or wrongfully, you know, I mean, the idea, there was a case years ago, it was really interesting, uh, this family owned every square foot of this one city. And uh, they decided, you know, if they didn't like you, they would, they would, you know, either bring penalties or fines against you. And the U.S. Supreme Court in that case said, yeah, that's garbage, you know, that common areas have to be, you know, allowable to people. Um, with this advent of so many people becoming homeless, you know, particularly in the Bay Area, particularly Los Angeles, Skid Row, I, I mean, we're, we're hitting catastrophic levels. And then the idea that you would criminalize people, which, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, we're not above that. You know, unfortunately, as humans, we haven't evolved past that point where we say, well, somebody's on the side of the road, apparently we need to, you know, press charges. You know, I mean, we're not quite at the point where, you know, let's get them to a place or, you know, like I say, I, I'm a big fan of the East Coast. They, you, every city used to have the common area that everybody co-owned. And, you know, if you run out of your house, well, you at least had that. But, you know, I mean, you know, you can't even walk in the woods now because some federal agent will come out and say, well, these are the woods and you didn't pay your permit. And, you know, <laughs> you know, it begs the I was in court one time. This one guy was sleeping on the ocean. You know, I'd be sleeping on the beach, and <laughs> the the fine was like a hundred dollars, and the, the judge at least cut it in half. But we all know why he was there; he couldn't afford to live there. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it was just this awkward. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. Where we think punishment is a solution to the problems of someone, yeah, being on de yeah. down and destitute, yeah, yeah. And maybe, maybe the maybe they did have some problems. Maybe they have a drug problem, or maybe they're they're there because of their own mistakes, but. Punishing them even more isn't yeah, going to no, no, help. That's, that's a failure. Right. Yeah. yeah, even in bankruptcy court, you know, they, if you can't pay it, you know, unless it's a student loan. Oh, <laughs> yeah, unless, yeah. It's a, unless it's government or, originated loan, uh, uh, you could bankrupt it out. And the idea that you know, you're going to, you know, I mean, there's the whole thing. You can't get blood out of a tournament. So, I mean. Yeah. Right. And, and once again, I want to define what is homeless. You know, what is homeless? There's so many varying degrees of homeless. So I think just the term homelessness is a bad term. It yeah. doesn't really describe what's really going on because every individual is different and need to be treated in a different way. Yeah. So when you say homelessness is a crime, well, uh, usually not. But some people are just freaking jerks who want to, don't give a damn about their uh, society, about their city. And some of them need to be treated a little bit differently than the single mom who just lost her job. But, yeah. but people like that are usually antisocial. There's usually already other laws that you could use to, to take care of them. They've usually stolen something, or if they're stealing stuff, they know yeah, they're, they're, I, if they're creating vandalism, but there's I, already I, laws against right. that. Right, if, yeah. if they're leaving heroin needles in my kid's park, yeah. they're a criminal. Yes, that's you know littering, I mean? right? So, We've already so got littering laws. Homeless is, yeah, so they're littering. So homelessness is not a crime, I hate that. Use of the, yeah, the, but, but I, I do believe I do believe that people do. I, I mean, I you know I go both ways. You know, I mean, I, 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 I you know I mean I remember on State Street in Santa Barbara, I would see uh, you know a homeless guy would be there, and you know he's he's obviously mentally ill, and you know but then there was a couple there that are trying to, to have a nice dinner, and then this small business guy is trying to feed them and hoping you know and how can you do it when you have the right. homeless you know I mean. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. These problems are, you know, it doesn't, you know, it just doesn't look like they thought these things through. And I, and I, and I even worse, I'll go the other way. It almost feels like, gosh, they, they, they stuck the problem out there and, you know, and, you know, be damned, you clean it up, you know, so. Well, and for me, it, mm -hmm. there's, there's been times in my life where it hadn't been for my family and, and my, and my family support network where I could very well have easily been, me or my family could have been homeless. Mm -hmm. And so I always look back at that and I say, you know, if one or two things had gone slightly differently, my life could be much different. Yeah. yeah, and so that can happen to any single person in, in, in the country. So, for I, me, I look at that and I go, you know, we need to start having better conversations. I don't know the answers. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here and I don't know. At the very least, a uh, large percentage of our homelessness can be traced to the high cost of housing. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but when you have someone sleeping in a car that's a 19, you know, the 2012 car, the oh, car yeah. is relatively new, but oh, they're yeah. sleeping in it because they can't afford a house. Yeah, no, no, then no. there's some structural issues. Yeah, I, I remember this article, and I can't even believe it's probably been more than 10 years that I uh, read it, but like in the Bay Area, you know, Silicon Valley, they had, you know, a couple living out of their car, and each of them was making 40000 a year. I mean, it's just, uh, so, but we see motorhomes parked along the side of the road, and people are living in their motorhomes. They can afford a motorhome, and they can afford to keep it running, but they can't afford an apartment. 
Right. Because it's well, too there, expensive. Yeah, because there's ongoing costs, whereas you paid for the motorhome, you've got it. So, yeah. Yeah, you've got $2,000 a month for a two-bedroom apartment, but you can rent your motorhome, park it on the side of the street. Yeah. And all you got to do is fill up gas and pay for insurance. Right. Yeah. Well, I saw a newspaper or, or a TV article one time. There's a lady, I think it was, she was in Oakland with a young daughter, and she was living in a homeless shelter. Um, somebody helped her get enough money to get an apartment in Las Vegas. A year later, she's doing fine living yeah. in Las Vegas. It's less expensive. Yeah, well, you, there's a structural issue with where you're at and then where you need to get to. I mean, you know, the information, you know, I, and we go back to all the companies that run around in California looking for companies saying, you know, if you if you bring your ten, your uh, business to Tennessee, this is how much more you can make. But but there's not people saying, well, you know, if, you know you're know, you homeless here, but if you move to Tennessee, you'll be better. There, You know, that, that doesn't really exist. Well, so. New York got in trouble recently for shipping some of their homeless people to like Atlanta and, and, and oh places like gosh. that. They were just giving them bus tickets to Atlanta. But, you know, there's actually might be, there might be some, some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There might be some structural issues. There might be some reason for doing that, yeah. right? If, if they're sending them to some place, say, hey, look, there's some, in, in Atlanta, there's a job for you. So here, we're going to give you a bus ticket for Atlanta. Yeah. So you can go to Atlanta, you can get the job. But that's not what they're doing. They're just saying, here's your bus ticket, go to Atlanta, have a hamburger when you get there, and good luck. Well, how about how about Trump, who apparently was shipping a certain number of illegal immigrants to various cities, you know, sanctuary cities. Okay, here you go. And then they were suing the administration over it. But I mean, I, I sort of was like, well, what are your damages? You're, you're a sanctuary city. And, and I thought you wanted it. Yeah, and, and so the federal government has now Given you what you said, you're not going to prosecute over. Now you're going to sue them for doing that. So, and all, <laughs> and, <laughs> awkwardly, is funny. Yeah, and oddly enough, that's the way you should be doing it. It should be an Ellis Island type system where if you're going to have immigration, you get them in, you process them within a few days, and then you, you sit them somewhere that can you take them. You know what? It. I have not heard anybody say that. I mean, I mean, I guess that's what what Trump's proposal was was that you hang out in Tijuana before you know which you know is you know you know. One of the least savory places in this world, but before you just come into America, you know, you know, you you, you know, Ellis Island was ideal because it was an island. And you, there was one way onto it, you know, and then when you're there, then they moved you on. To well, the Ellis Island was, was just the main. It was just one of the induction centers. There was induction centers all over the country. Yeah, Ellis Island so. is just the one that people know. Oh, huh, that's interesting. It's but but it, you get into an induction center. They're there for two or three days. You get the health check. You get the paperwork check, and then you sent then you send them off to you know to New York or to. Boston or to wherever the local major city is, and they're sent so, out. So the new Ellis Island is going to become Las Vegas, where we ship everybody. We do all the health checks, and there we go. <laughs> just, just do it there. Because <laughs> I want to go there too. I like Vegas. <laughs> well, as we talk about money in this homeless industrial complex, there's been big money in homeless services. Is this a you know a, it's a big problem with in Los Angeles and uh, Seattle specifically. But, you know, are there short and long-term solutions to the, the industrial complexes where you've got lots of companies and individuals making money mm -hmm. off of people being homeless? Um, my understanding is that, you know, uh, certain banks would make money off of certain transactions that went to people who were poor or otherwise. Uh, uh, when you have services, it seems that you have to have some sort of incentives. And when you put an incentive in place to get the person to the service, uh, that's going to foster more. And so what I believe the article is saying is that we've gotten to the point where we're encouraging this. And then, you know, unfortunately, when you keep encouraging it, now the question is, what's the end of this? Yeah, what's your exit strategy? Yeah. Just like going to war, you better have an exit strategy on this, right? If you're going to be sh uh, sheltering homeless people in a multi-million dollar unit and funneling thousands and thousands of dollars into this place every day, what's the plan? What's the exit strategy? Or is the plan to... Keep on friendly money towards my nonprofit yeah. that claims I'm helping the homeless. Yeah. And I'm just getting paid, and I have no plan to get them back to stop. Yeah, you know, get them what, back on their feet. I'm just making money. What was that one? Uh, I forget. And I want to say it was one of the presidents says nothing's more permanent than a short-term government solution or something like that. Uh, right, and we're was, seeing that all yeah. over California. We're seeing all over, where it's just throw money at, throw money at, throw money at, and not really find a solution. No, well, in, in L.A., I think, I, I don't want to say it wrong, they're spending $10 billion. Uh, I correct me no, on that, no, someone, if that's, I... If, no, that's easy. If that's they're spending easy. $10 billion on homelessness, just yeah. on homelessness mm -hmm. in, in Los Angeles. And going, you could just write a check and send all these people to a house somewhere at right. that kind of price. Yeah. Now, right. the problem with that is you'd get people who want a house would come to L.A. and say, give me my I check. I would go. I would be there. <laughs> you want to give me a million dollars? L.A. wants to give me a million dollars to move down there to buy a house because I might be homeless somewhere else. Great. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, you and know? then you get the uh, these Ponzi schemes that people end up in on the was it Section Eight housing, you know, and, and I mean yeah. they they had these one people that they they not only uh, not only were they multiple people had 
sectioned eight the same house, and they were all four of them getting checks in it, but they had owned it, and then they, uh, and then they were buying other, other units using the section eight housing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I applaud them. <laughs> Good job. I, I, I don't even genius. know what to say. I mean, I mean that's, that's rather entrepreneurial in certain that's aspects, right. right? That's American right there. <laughs> Well, if they're going to set up a system that's that easy <coughs> to abuse, you can you almost going to say, well, yeah, you, yeah, well, you almost, well, knock yourself out because if you're going to allow you to abuse that system that easily, well, then it's kind of their fault for setting up a system that is so complex that yeah, it's easy yeah, to, to easily that, to be that allows abused. for that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and we want we all want to find a solution to for homelessness. For homelessness. We want to find a solution for people who are on the borderline of homelessness but the, i think the solution is the structural issues yeah. it's why is why is a house in, in the yeah, edge of so the ghetto expensive. costing five hundred thousand dollars yeah why, why right. is it so hard to build it, and the solution is not fake compassion because i see it all the time people act like oh i just want to feel i'll feel so compassionate about spending someone else's money yeah to save that homeless person yeah. they're, they're not doing it they're not saving a homeless person yeah someone's just getting paid yeah, and it, there'd be one thing, if we're spending all this money and it was actually working, then okay, you might not like the spending all the money, but at least people are getting off the streets and people are being helped, but yeah. that's not what's happening. We've got, we've got homeless camps and everywhere. Faux, faux services, faux services, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's, so as we talk about faux services, Hong Kong protests have been growing the last couple of week, a week ago, a couple of days ago. Hong Kong protest, the, the most that we've been out in weeks, it was literally like a mile long in the street. I, you couldn't see the end of the protest on the picture yeah. I had saw. It. And, and is this a sign that you know, more political establishment is starting to fail? Well, well, okay, so, so obviously China is a very totalitarian uh, nation. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's interesting because you know, we have certain groups in America, you know, like quote unquote Antifa and so forth, and they're angry or, or you know, I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders, you know, they're pushing for certain socialist platforms, right. right? Okay, well, you've got China, which has a, uh, you know, it's somewhat capitalist, but they're, you know, still fairly socialist, and there's people that are not happy with the government and the, the oppressiveness. And what's interesting is you have a lot of people that are angry with America's set, system, and yet you have these Hong Kong protesters who, you know, want our First Amendment rights, want, you know, these are hardworking people, you know, and I mean, I mean, it, you know, and, and to see them, you know, hold up the uh, Rocky poster with Trump's head on it, you know, I mean, just, I, I mean, it, it's just absolutely, you know, I, you know, it, it, you know, may you live in interesting times, you know, this is, this is as crazy as a situation as I can absolutely mm -hmm. imagine. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, and, and the Babylon Bee, right, you know, they, they had that, you know, fake news where they said, Bernie Sanders went to went to Hong Kong to tell him how good they really have it. You know, I mean, like right. you know, this is your socialist paradise. You know, <laughs> you know. Right. Well, I gotta say, these I mean, these people are heroes. They're risking. They're literally risking their lives for freedom. Yeah. You know, and here here in America, we got people begging for socialism. Yeah. And these people are dying in the streets for freedom, and they're looking to us. They're looking to the United States. Yeah. Uh, as a beacon of freedom. And apparently Trump has done some things that apparently has helped them. You know, some of his trade negotiations has been able to support them. I, I haven't looked into what that is. I kind of believe it, you know. I mean, uh, uh, you know, they're waving the American flag, and, and uh, I, it, it's it's really interesting to watch. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, eh. It's interesting to watch. I wish I could do something, but... Well, yeah. it kind of exposes we it kind of exposes the American media hypocrisy as he gave this Greta Thunberg the person of the year while the time where the Hong Kong protesters are ignored. Yeah, right. you know. You yes, yes, yeah. yeah. No, though no, that's that's really interesting. Absolutely. You know, uh, something that in some ways it almost seems trivial. Uh, you know, let's you know. So let's be some real news, right? Okay. So so you know we keep talking about the impeachment and the quid pro quo, right? And right. yet and yet what's sitting right in the middle of it? Uh, Biden's son, who apparently was you know sit, making sixty thousand a month on this Ukrainian board of directors, and he has zero knowledge of, of fossil fuels or oil or anything else like that, and yet it seems to be a quid pro quo, but we haven't heard that. It's Trump's quid pro quo that we keep going back to. Well, uh, can you investigate the guy who apparently had the real quid pro quo? You know, so yeah. so 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 the media complex is coming out. Yeah, you got these huge huge protests. They're only coming out a little bit, and where do I see it? You know, it's not in the local news so much. It's really on you social, know, media. social media. Yeah, that's where we yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't find it. You don't find it on the broadcast news. You don't find it on the cable news. But yeah, uh, you may get a thirty-second blurb on a cable news, but they yeah. don't repeat it. And apparently, France the same way. They're they're at war with their own state. You know, and the same thing. And and you know, and I you don't hear anything about that. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's astounding how how much they're 
wanting our Second Amendment rights so they can protect themselves. Yes. And we're sitting here as, uh, giving it up. Trying it, to give it away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had in Virginia. Our politicians, yeah. In Virginia, they're sitting here threatening people for if they don't turn in their guns, we're going to send in the, the National Guard, I think, if you've heard about that. And then they're, and then they're building that. their own militias now. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. You know, statutes that we have and these all these quote unquote the rule of law, whatever. You know, you make a statute, but if you don't have popular support, if it's not physically possible, I mean I mean, you know, it should be meaningless and everybody should say, you know, that is wrong and then say, Yeah, no, and, and then take steps to remove it. And uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it, you know, like I say, it's it's really interesting and, and uh, Yeah, well this this one at this thing in Virginia actually kind of is it's a strange case. It bothers me that that these Virginia politicians are taking such a strand, strong stance against their, their, own own, citizens. their own citizens, but law enforcement, because law enforcement said we're not going to enforce this law. Yeah. And so now they're saying, well, if the law enforcement, we're going to fire you and we're going to send in the National Guard. I mean, they're actually calling for violence against the, Ameri the American citizens. It's a strange, we live in really mm -hmm. strange times and it's actually quite scary. Yeah, what is it? Uh, it was something like 64 of the 70 some odd counties uh, you know, where most of the population is clearly in those few, but but most of the rural population said, yeah, we're not adhering to it, have their own militias that are forming. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like, I, I mean, it just absolutely, you know, and the same thing was with Oregon and Washington State. They had, you know, you know, you know, you know, relatively blue states with huge, you know, rural, you know, uh, populations that, you know, and they're like, they put some gun law through and they're like, you know, enough, we're not doing it. And the local right. law enforcement are like, yeah, enough, we're not. Well, and this is the purpose of the Second Amendment. No, I'm not advocating to shoot politicians. Yeah. But I am saying that you have the right to, to defend yourself. yourself, to protect yourself against tyrants. And some of these politicians are acting like little tyrants. Yeah. So yeah, they're saying, it, yeah, and, be and, careful politicians yeah, or yes. little tyrants. Yeah, yeah. And, and, we still and, live in a free country, kind and, of. And yeah, and, and, <laughs> kind of. and that was, you know, it was put to Obama and Heller uh, when they, you know, uh, when they, uh, and Holder, excuse me, when they said, uh, you know, what is socialism? Well. It's the definition of socialism is who's holding the gun, right? Right. Yeah. And, right. and, and, and yeah, and liberty, you get to hold one too. Well, let's air this pre Christmas show on a little bit of a happier note. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's an airline passenger out of New Zealand. These two airline passengers met, an 80 year old woman and a young man, and they had a conversation. And the young man gave his first class passenger seat to this old, this old woman. And the kicker of the story was she had like literally the worst seat in the plane. She was back at the back of the plane by the toilets and he didn't issue a complaint, not a, not a, not a word. And this little old lady, little, little old lady who had just had her knee reconstructed, got to sit in, the, in those cabins and have the nice, uh, and so not only did he do a good thing, that's a huge, not only was it just a, you know, hey, I got a better seat, you take it. That's a huge financial yeah. gift. And so as we end that on Christmas, you know, Good things happen. Good things happen. You just do the right thing and then move people. forward. So as we, we end the day, we'd like to thank our guests for appearing. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Michael, for appearing. For information on our topics, you can go to libertariancounterpoint.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification button. You can start looking for us on your favorite social media platform. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, thank you for watching. And please remember, love everything.